Welcome everyone, one and all, to my reaction to Season 3, Episode 2 of Young Royals. So, last time we had the opener of Season 3, and it definitely did set up a few different routes that we can go down for the season, which is exciting and concerning at the same time. Now, that final scene was probably the most shocking of the episode, as it seems as though we are going to be having a big change up for our characters' lives, and... Given the social implications of it, I hope that Willa is okay, and I hope that people don't take it out on him, but I guess we're just gonna have to wait and see how it all plays out, you know? But yes, with that said, let's jump back in to the world of Young Royals. Oh, the way he's just reaching up at it. Oh, I miss you! Come on now! That's so cute. <laughs> Let's not go there, boys. <laughs> ah, like playing it out. <laughs> I feel, you know, when you feel like you're kind of like. Phone time. Oh Jesus, that's so annoying. Uh, come in. Oh, so they have to fully come into the room to take it. That's crazy. But yeah, like I said before, I always feel very awkward when I'm <laughs> watching a show and it's like a really intimate moment between two people because don't get me wrong, I know it's like very important in TV shows and like so many relationships wouldn't feel as real without them showing it. But I always feel really creepy. I always feel like I'm sat here like interrupting an intimate moment. Like I'm sitting here with like a fucking webcam just watching it and it's like, ugh. <laughs> Poor principal by Gold Digger has an imported problem. I will never understand how people feel so brave in writing that kind of stuff. Like, the fact that people feel like they can do that with no consequence is a problem. Stäng av. Hela vår student är förstörd. Graduation, calm down. Because of your own actions, to be fair, are we, are we missing that part? Är det på riktigt någon här inne som har blivit mobbad? Men det här är ju en uppenbart kryddad historia. Alltså snacka om en jävla porrfilm. Alltså vi, vi hade verkligen inte en porrfilm på vår invigning. I don't, it's like I get why they're not taking this seriously and why they're not seeing it as a problem that they caused because in their eyes they were just keeping it up with tradition and at the end of the day they are young people so I don't expect them to grasp the magnitude of the problems that they were allowing to continue here but like that's the point you were allowing it to continue no one stopped no one stood there and was like wait a minute maybe we shouldn't be doing these things maybe these things are not actually good things to be doing in a school but no they didn't because they're stupid they think that they can get away with everything because unfortunately in life they can get away with everything the more money you have these in institutions are basically designed to let these people just do whatever the fuck they want and it sucks because it feels like there's nothing you can do to stop them, but it's just like, it's just the way it is, you know? But yeah, room back to what I was saying. I'm not surprised that they, they don't understand that it was their fault as to why this happened, but it still just sucks to not see a growing moment for them and not have them think, ah, you know what? We worked hard, but we were stupid as well, and we did things that were wrong. Maybe this is just our karma. We must also offer our student, for that Ville was tvungen och berätta för hela världen att han huckar med någon jävla snubbe. Fan skärp du Vincent. That's not what happened. Tänk om skolan behöver stängas ner. Alla vi kommer behöva byta skolor. Alltså vill du gå i någon skola i stan med sossar och nyrika white trash? <laughs> oh my god, okay. <laughs> Lovely. Visa både skolinspektionen och media vår bild av hur skolan är på riktigt. Då kanske det lugnar ner sig. Kanske vi till och med får tillbaka vår student. Yeah, I agree. That's the way you should be going about it. No blame game. Don't focus on who put it out there. How do you fucking fix it? That's the main thing that you need to focus on. So good on them. Hon har migrän, sömnsvårigheter. Läkarna har tagit alla tänkbara tester på henne. Så nu får vi bara vänta och se vad de säger. It might just be a stress-related illness, unfortunately. Du har inte varit med om någonting av det de pratar om. Inget som inte har kunnat hantera. Oh, interesting. Om de här historierna visar sig stämma. Då ser det inte bra ut ifall vi låter dig vara kvar här. Vadå så ni tänker försöka tvinga dig att sluta här? Men ja, om det visar sig stämma, då måste vi agera. That does suck. It's like, this is the one time that I'm actually agreeing and understanding with where the palace is coming from. Because that does make sense. Like, they can't leave him in a school where they've seen all of this happening. Unless they're going to leave him there and say that he is like 
a big force of change for the school and then that could be a good moment for him you know that could be a moment where we see him actually do like his first act to the public by showing that he is able to overcome all of this and is able to change this school and turn it around for the better you know but i don't know if that's going to happen considering the animosity with all the other people in regards to the fact that in their eyes he caused this you know how does he think he's an attention whore what led you to believe him sitting quietly on a bus was him being an attention whore calm the fuck down then it deserved to close exactly <laughs> i know what you say it would be harder but at the end of the day if the school closed down because of those issues it is what it is <laughs> i get what they're saying that, that's a very good mentality to have it's one of those things it's like it sucks we won't be able to see each other as much but as long as we don't let it get to us and like break our relationship down we're gucci august <laughs> I thought no. the extracurriculars were cancelled. Does that not count with rowing? Skulle du säga att du trivs här på Hilberska? Interesting. Yeah. She did like a survey. Och gemenskapen på skolan är ju helt fantastisk. God, she's really trying to talk it up, isn't she? Skolinspektionen kommer att besöka här. Och då har de skickat en lista på elever som de vill intervjua. And that includes you. Why? Because she's close to Willa? Jag vill att du ska veta att jag är så glad att de har valt just dig att prata med. Vi är verkligen... Stolta över att ha dig här hos oss. I'm very intrigued about this head teacher's angle. I don't trust her fully. Här har vi mångfald på alla sätt. Wow. Sorry, let's just process that for a minute. She's literally saying, I'm so glad that they're talking to you because we have diversity in this school. Actually, fuck off. I hate shit like that. Oh. Talk to people because you want their perspective on things. Like, I would understand if they wanted to talk to Felice to see that with the homophobia issues and everything, to see if there might be some kind of, like, racist issues in the school as well, given that they're school inspectors and they're going to want to cover everything. But framing it that I'm so glad we have you here because we have diversity in every way, like, that just wasn't necessary. You're almost framing it as though the reason she's here is to be a diverse... Like, it's basically the school version of a diversity hire, you know? Like... Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> nah, that's actually dangerous though. Don't tickle him while he's doing that. Här kommer då lite information kring vår annual spring hike. Interesting. Är det något vi alla verkligen behöver just nu så är det att vara ute i naturen. I agree. So it might be a good way for like everyone to bond again after all these struggling times. Stop. To be fair, they might outlaw it just because if they're going to keep it boys and girls separated, that's usually to avoid stuff like that. So maybe they'll say, right, we know about your relationship. You can't <laughs> be in the same tent, but we'll see. Alltså, jag fattar om du inte vill tillbaka till den där skolan. Då måste du kanske börja tänka lite på vad du ska göra istället. Yeah, that's fair. It's a fair concern for a parent to have, but... Körkort, till exempel. Du kanske vill jobba med hästar. Jag tror inte jag vill jobba med hästar. No, is it like... Jag har sett att människor bara köper och säljer dem som om det vore någon produkt. Oh shit, okej. Okay. Fair dues. Men man kanske kan jobba med att ta hand om de hästarna som far illa i så fall. Ah. Och då är ju körkortet ett första bra steg. That's actually a really good point. I love that he is saying this stuff to her, honestly. He's actually trying to help her out. He's not just letting her do nothing. That's fair. Yeah, you gotta do that anyway. That's the whole point of this class, or else you're just gonna sit and do nothing. <laughs> is he joining? Oh my god, are they doing it to spend more time together? Oh, he didn't even know! That's so cute! He didn't know! Um, boys? <laughs> boys, you are in public. <laughs> this is quite full on. I'm not a big PDA person, so this is throwing me off. <laughs> he likes to spend time with you. Aww. <laughs> That's so sweet. I didn't think about that. Now they now get to spend time outside of school. 
Oh, that like pain of letting him go. But damn, they were going for it. Men det är också så, alltså det är så sjukt sorgligt för vi sitter liksom här helt deprimerade och alltså hela världen bara tror massa sjuka saker om oss typ. To be fair, some of you were doing sick things, but I understand why you would be upset if you haven't done anything. Like I'd be pissed. Och just den här invigningsgrejen. Det är väl ingen som tänkt på den så konstigt och. I mean, we all know that it was true. Right, so. Kul skämt. Kanske. Maybe. Jag vet inte. I would assume, given what we know about him, maybe if we're talking about that instant, which it's disgusting to even talk about, you know, but if we're talking about that instant, I assume that he got, you know, while watching a video and was made fun of because I assume that that's where like the whole joke thing was rooted from, which is fucking disgusting. Fucking sucks. It just means that you're like, you're rooting out the people who are gay and then making fun of them for being gay. Like, how do they, how do they see that as a joke? You know? Like, I don't quite understand the thought process of doing that and then going, that was actually very funny. What a great joke. How does your brain get to that point? I don't get it. You have to be like one of the most unempathetic people to exist, which to be fair, from what we've seen of these people, it adds up. Oh, so because of him, they put a stop to it. Okay. Ah, nice. Is he having like anxiety problems and all that? August. Oh yeah, you're not allowed to go out, mate. Träna får du göra innan utegångsförbudet eller på schemalagd träningstid. Blund om inte får få ut med någon. Du kanske kan göra lite yoga på rummet. Yeah, you're not gonna be allowed to leave, mate. You, there's no exceptions. It's like, don't get me wrong. I'm not. I'm not a monster. There are parts of me that do feel bad for him. I still don't like the man, and I still think that what he did was horrible and his reactions to the entire thing i've always disagreed with but i do have empathy for him and for any of these people who are currently having issues and a lot of the time need fresh air or a walk or a run to clear their head to make their mental health better because they've kind of just been pushed to being inside now and not being able to do that which does fucking suck and it's those kind of things where when you do this blanket rule of curfew none of this none of that you forget the certain aspects that would be affected by that. You forget that for some people, their only way to get through the day is to go for an evening run and clear their head, you know? So this kind of stuff does, it just sucks. There's no real other way to put it. What is that? A VR set? Is it a camera? Oh, it's a phone. Oh my God, I couldn't figure it out. <laughs> That's so funny. Don't pick up. Please don't pick up. Please don't pick up, darling. Unknown number. Okay, I wouldn't be surprised if she picks up, but I hope she hangs up. Please don't rekindle this romance, I swear to God. Hello? Is he just not gonna say anything? Hello. I feel like she'll know who that was. When you have like someone who is your coping mechanism and you can't talk to them anymore, of course you're gonna get that urge to talk to them. Don't, don't, don't. Oh no. I will call up. Oh no. What? More Sara. I can't stir. I will get them on more. Bra. More bra. Oh god, oh god, oh god. Hon kommer inte till skolan. Hon har inga vänner kvar. Jesus. Hon har inte sin familj kvar. Allt är ditt fel. Yikes. Jag kommer snart. No. No. Vad fan tror du att håller på med? Du ska hålla oss borta från varandra. Du ska inte prata med honom eller henne. Där du ska inte andas i närheten av någon av oss. I get that. August, min familj äger dig. Du lyssnar på mig. Jag lyssnar inte på dig. Jag jobbar inte för dig. Du är inte kung än. I'm disagreeing with you a bit here, Willa, but I get where it's coming from. That was a bad idea. Oh god. Yep. <laughs> Right, before we actually hear all this out, I will air my thoughts. Willa is obviously coming from a place of pain. That's where those words came from, obviously. From an outside perspective, someone who is not affected by this personally, Willa was kind of not out of order. I don't want to say he was out of order because 
I think within his mind and the things he's been through, he does have the right to say those kind of things to August, but he doesn't have the right to tell him to not talk to Sada. That's kind of something that's between them and she is allowed to decide. I get that it would be painful and it would fucking suck if you found out that they were like talking again and everything, but he's his own person. She's her own person. They are allowed to talk. It's kind of out of your control at that point. But I definitely think that he is allowed to talk about his boyfriend and say, You're, you need to stay away from him. Like, we made this deal to stay away from each other. You can't then start talking to the person who's probably the most important person in my life. His sister? Yeah, you could do what you want there. That's two people who are allowed to have their own relationship with each other, whatever they want to do. I don't like it, and I would be very disappointed if Sada got together with him. But I'm not going to sit here and say that Willa is allowed to say you're not allowed to talk to her. But yeah, definitely he's in his right to say don't talk to Simon and like stay away from us because it's his boyfriend. Like back the fuck off. Men nu är det så förstår ni att det är inte bara vi på skolan som ser det mycket allvarligt på det här, utan det gör även hovet. Yeah, obviously. Och därför så har vi bestämt tillsammans att ni två ska gå i, ja, vad ska jag kalla det, medlarsamtal. Oh no. Det, det kommer inte hända igen, Boris. Det, du kan vara lugn. Vad bra, men det är redan bestämt. Ja, oh, that sucks, but honestly, it might be a good idea. Det är en väldigt nära relation, bara två med Erik. Nej, inte han. Han känner inte Erik. <laughs> vad sa du? Som att du gjorde det. Right, don't go there, mate. It's his brother. Don't be a fucking dick. Oh no, what is this gonna be? Is it conversion therapy? If it's conversion therapy, I'm gonna lose it. What a kind thing to send to someone. Oh, is he writing his own song? Let's go. <gasps> Let's start a revolution. Sorry. Oh my god, actually imagine a king of a country whose husband is a like a musician. How fucking cool would that be? Bless. Oh he recorded it. Ah, uh, I wouldn't post it for your own mental state. I wouldn't post it for his own mental state just because he's going to get hate comments just to hate at the moment. And I don't think that'll do any good for him. All right, there are the nice ones. Where are the negative ones? Okay. So we were only focusing on the positives. Let's go then. Maybe it was a good thing. I mean, to be fair, you can on most social medias block comments that include certain words, can't you? So as long as he has like a list of words that he's blocked, surely it would be just a positive thing, but I don't know if he can do it on whatever app he's using. Oh, uh, because he's, oh, because he's talking about starting a revolution and all that fuck. They're going to be pissed. Uh oh. This sucks though because it's like it is it's so far been a very positive and uplifting thing for Simon. So for Willa to call and be the one who puts a damper on it, even though he's not the one who said it, fucking sucks. So I hope this doesn't cause an issue. But I th honestly, at this point, I'm just getting more and more pissed off at the palace. For basically just leaving Willa to do things for them and explain things to Simon, when at the end of the day, should the palace not be talking to Simon the way that they do Willa and training him when it comes to media and everything? Like, you know that they're dating, you know that he's basically part of the family at the moment. So why are you not directly speaking to him and helping him through this and explaining these are the things that you should post, avoid posting things like this because X, Y, Z. You know, it feels like they've just left him to his own devices to do whatever he wants and then they're getting upset when he's doing what he wants I, it's just starting to frustrate me they need to actually help simon and his mother understand this world that he is in right now den här videon som du har lagt upp ja den är den är jätte jätte fin men men vad men jag vill bara inte att du ska få massa skit för det nej inte jag heller men jag får ju lägga ut vad jag vill eller ja no you can't Ah, oh, this is such a frustrating conversation to have because I am like, I'm the first person to say that you should be able to post whatever the fuck you want and do whatever the fuck you want. It's your life. It's your life to live. 
when it comes to the way that the palace does things and the way that you're like you're you're well, what's the correct wording like your face on social media how you present yourself socially to the public when you are entangled with the palace and everything it does become more complicated it's just a fact it's something that you do have to watch and with the current way that they do things you can't just post whatever you want and i know that that sucks but it's one of those things where it's like at the end of the day for this relationship to work and for him to be the crown prince and be in a relationship with someone simon does have to get to a point where he understands why he's not allowed to post whatever he wants and all of that and i that sucks i hate it and i'm at that point where like if that doesn't work for you then maybe this relationship won't work like i'm just being a realistic person in that regard because if this is going to become like a big problem for them there's not much they can do like it's just a thing the palace are always going to be like this the institution is always going to be like this and i don't know it, it sucks because we're looking at someone especially when we're looking at like an artist someone who like writes their own music and all that a lot of it is personal expression and personal freedom so just like the the thought of restricting him is so sad but like it has to be done for this relationship to work I don't know how I feel about that. Jag vill bara att vi ska kunna ha ett privat liv. Då funkar det inte att du lägger ut sånt här på sociala medier. I agree. Inte för oss. Okej. Okay. Jag älskar dig. Jag måste lägga på. Okej. Okay. Mamma kompis. Yeah. Jag älskar dig också. Oh, good. Good. I was going to be concerned if he didn't say I love you back because like you can have an issue you can have a problem in a relationship, but never end a call in a bad way. Like, end it in a good way and just see what happens after that. You can have your alone time to think about it. I know that you are angry at her. But I know that you are still alive. Mama, I've been taking care of her since we were small. At school and her relationships. And I've been in contact with my own father. Because she hates him. Yeah, interesting. So, no. I can't stop me. Okay. 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 But his decision to cut contact with his dad because it upset her was at the end of the day his decision. And when she's now got to a point where perhaps she is open to opening a relationship with him, I honestly don't think it's fair to hold that against her. I think that she should be allowed to explore her relationship with her father if she wants to and it not be something that is a personal attack on you. But I get that given that his decision to cut contact with his father was based off of her emotions, why that would be an issue for him. Du har fått något brev från Hillerska om att du förlorar din plats om du inte kommer tillbaka nästa vecka. Oh, so she still has her place available. Interesting. Okay. I hope she does go. It's a good opportunity to lose out on. Yeah, how do you? Makes you think I'd do something like that. Mm. She's concerned about her daughter living with him, obviously, given his past. Which I do get. Jag är ju bara avundsjuk för att du får ju ändå försvara dig nu. Vi andra sitter ju bara så här läser allt skit som alla skriver om allting. Och vi kan liksom inte ens bemöta det. Fast det är ju mycket av det de säger som faktiskt är sant. Ja. Yeah. Jag har inte tänkt på det innan, förrän nu i alla fall. Nej, fast det som tidningarna skriver är ju så mycket värre än vad det är. Alltså samtidigt så här, man kan ju stänga ner hela skolan för det. Nej, exakt. You can. Men jag bara menar, det finns ju en tydlig hierarki. Och vissa förväntningar och grupptryck. Peer pressure is definitely a big thing, especially when it comes to the initiations. Så är det väl liksom bättre att säga det när man går här och inte när man har slutat börja klaga, liksom. What an atrocious thing to say. Det är alltid till mig att sätta på det när jag har glömt. Men aldrig er. Ooh. Oh. Jag menar bara att det är inte alltid jättelätt att vara den enda svarta tjejer med lockigt hår i vår klass. Nice. Good bringing this up. I love you for that. Well done. Make them see that just because their time is so easy doesn't mean that yours has been so easy. Du är jätte, jättevacker. She can know that and she can understand that, but it, it doesn't make riktigt, it easier. Det är inte riktigt det jag menar med det här. Men, ja. Yeah. Sorry to pause again so quickly after, but that is an interesting take. That after hearing something like that, your takeaway would be that she thinks that she's not beautiful. Almost as if to say, 
the her being told to do that is bringing her self-esteem down whereas that's not the case it's not a matter of bringing self-esteem down and making people think that she's not as beautiful it's more so that to be treated differently just by the way that you look and to be treated differently just because of an aspect of yourself that you can't change and you shouldn't have to change and you shouldn't want to change it fucking sucks and it may make you uncomfortable to hear that that she's had a different experience than you but being her good friend you should take this as a moment to be like hmm maybe i have been living in my own head a little maybe i have been thinking that i've been having such a good time so everyone else has been having such a good time when in reality we are all very different people we all have very different experiences and just because you're treated a certain way doesn't mean that your friend will be treated that way. And you have to recognize that and see that as part of the problem. Tjejer med tjejer och killar med killar. Nej, hallå. Vi fyra. Ja, då får väl någon av er dela tält med två andra. Fast vänta. No, who? Gay får man zooma varandra men inte man är straight, eller va? Och vilken tjej du är upp till nu då? Nej, men jag bara... Alltså, i teori... I mean, teori... I do get that. I do get that. What about the non-binary ones? Nice. It's one of those things is like they're complaining about the fact that like they can't be together, but then as soon as it comes up, it's like the girls are like, nah, bro, nah, you keep those boys away from my tent. Men alltså, jag, jag skulle ju kunna sova med dem, till exempel. Nej, Eller så. nej men förlåt. Är du säker? I mean, yeah, Felice could share with Willer and Simon. Uh, killar, uh, skulle jag kunna sova med er? Alltså, om det känns okej. Okay. That would be ja. so good! Oh, stop! I love that so much! Could get back to us. Oh, this is so cute. Where did they get the electricity from, though? Are they, like, not that far? Or did they bring, like, a generator? <laughs> oh, they've come to visit? That's so cool. We come in peace, also. Molly. The royal guards. <laughs> Who the fuck are you, bitch? Step back. <laughs> That's what I'm asking. Do you know what a rave is? <laughs> I'm not big on raves myself. It's just too loud and too much going on, but... <laughs> As long as everyone else is having fun. Excuse me. Hello. Oh, hello. No, stop. I can't. Oh. Maybe some jealousy coming out. Does she actually like her? That's interesting. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that is so funny. Simon's kompis var en tog lite konstigare. Don't be rude. Please don't say anything homophobic. Interesting. I mean, we know that there was... I need to look up their names because I'm not going to lie. I'm, I'm really bad with these two's names. Okay, Stella and Frederica. We definitely saw last season that those feelings were very real that Stella was having for Frederica, but we didn't see whether it was reciprocated or not. And it seems as though Stella has kind of got to that point where she's accepted that, okay... They're not going to be reciprocated. I should probably try and get over her. And it seems like looking at Rosh is definitely a way for her to do that. But there is definitely, definitely an element of jealousy here from Frederica. Now, that could be jealousy coming from a friend spending time with someone else when, like, you're both so close and that makes you feel a bit jealous. Or she could genuinely be having feelings as well. They just have never told each other. I was going to be a summer leader on a football school. Oh, let's go. That sounds fun. Och intensivt. De är typ 60 kilo tror jag. Åh, oh, kan jag dö av gullning? <laughs> Stop. I New York. Jag är läst i USA. Nej. Aldrig? <laughs> Nej. För det, alltså, det är typ så att ställa som mitt största intresse är att resa. It's mine and Stella's biggest interest. And you don't have that interest in you, do you? You don't share that interest. <laughs> jag ska också sommar jobba. Oh, he's going to work this summer. Eller jag ska um, gå en uh, kurs. En utbildning hela sommaren genom hovet. Det, det kommer nog också att bli så intensivt. Liksom. Why does this feel so awkward? Kolla själv på bilden, det är bara bilder på henne. Vad fan är grejen? What? Kan jag få min telefon? Hur rör jag ifrån? Fuck that. Oh god, that's sad. Sorry. Oh. And then it gets back to Willer as well as him being the problem. It's so sad. So annoying. Nej, okej, det kanske var lite stelt. Men nästa gång så... Ville, du kan inte bara säga att du också ska sommarjobba. Du ska på prinsskola, det är inte samma sak. 
actually, I was thinking that at the time, but I didn't want to pause and say it. It is problematic to say that you going to a school that the crown is like, basically, a, how do I word this? It's problematic to say that you are going to be working hard this summer and it's going to be tense when you've basically had everything handed to you. Like, if we're looking at it from an outside perspective, it's the idea of, like, a prince has everything handed to him. It's not like he's going to be paying for anything when he's going to this summer thing. It's not like there's going to be, like, a huge hardship he's going to have to overcome. Whereas we know, looking at him, that it is a stressful job and it's something that is probably going to be hard for him to deal with. But it is problematic to say to someone who is from, like, an ordinary background, let's just say, that you're going to be working hard this summer at Prince School. I do get why that might be something that is, ugh, it's not received very well. Because socially, people don't do well with royalty when it comes to royalty talking about their problems. Because people view royalty as this, like, very easy life. This life where everything is handed to you. You don't have to work for a thing a day in your life. It's not true. I'm sure that they do work hard. I'm sure that they go through their own versions of hardships. But it's definitely viewed by the general public as an easier life because there's never a problem of how am I going to pay for things? How am I going to pay for my rent? How am I going to pay for all of these necessities that I need? And even at that point, then I want to go on holiday, but I've only just got enough money to pay for my rent and my bills and everything. I'm not gonna be able to go on holiday for like 10 years. You know what I mean? There's that whole vibe of this big just disconnect between being a royal and being just an ordinary person and that's why it just fucking it, it sucks in that regard because i know that to him he was just having a conversation about what he's doing in summer and all of that but it would come across as almost offensive i do get that skillnaden är att jag inte har fått välja som rosh har vill vi måste jobba för att råd med saker oh jesus okay difference of opinion here ja jag har behövt söka jobb som jag 14 års kommuner varje år du kan inte prata om att välja och Oh, don't shush him. To be fair, keep your voices down, but shushing him is ooh. Interesting. That's a fair. Um, Felice, yeah, we might actually need you, darling, because there is a lot of tension in this tent. We'll talk about this fully at the end. I'll, I'll go through all of my thoughts at the end. I don't want to pause again. His mum, his advisor, who is it? Hey, papa. Interesting. Oh, shit. Is he going to have to take over for some of the things? No, 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 we're not going down that route. Oh, God. Mustn't get out. Jesus. Okay, right. We have a lot to unpack after this episode. I feel like I've shared my thoughts on things, but I haven't, like, fully fully like worked through them all so i'm excited to actually talk about it so yes there we have season three episode two of young royals and there was a lot more tension this episode okay we have quite a few things to discuss let's focus on what let's focus on the end end right now so his mum's taking time off it doesn't seem as though he's gonna have to fulfill any royal duties for her or else i feel like they would have mentioned that he's gonna have to like come out of school to do certain things and they also said that they don't want it known that she is taking time off. But given that a lot of the time royals are attending many, many functions and events throughout the year, how are they going to play it off as if no one knows that she's taking time off? You know? I'm not quite sure how they're going to be doing that, but I guess we'll see how it plays out. Maybe they do have other people that they could send. Um, but yeah, so the money talk. The money, the privilege, the job thing. Let's go back to the campfire because I feel like that's where I was getting most lost in my thoughts. The way I view it is... The, the life of a royal does have its own struggles and does have its own like pains and stresses. They're just very different from someone who lives an ordinary life. And I know saying ordinary is like probably the bad, a bad word, but like I can't think of a better way to describe it compared to like royalty and an ordinary life, you know, like that's just how I view it. Um, to live that ordinary side of things and to get a job because you need money, you need to survive your reasons for doing things are a lot different than if you are a royal a royal's 
jobs that they do and the work that they do is to work towards pleasing a general public is working towards basically upholding an institution and upholding an image of an institution and that's a very different way of life than someone who works to survive to work to survive to work to like put bread on the table to work to be able to afford to do things definitely has that element of struggle to it just in the sense that you have to do it you have no choice a lot of the time and it, it frustrated me a little bit when willa said the difference is that she gets to choose what she does as a job it's frustrating a bit because yes there is an element of choice but for a lot of people there isn't that element element of choice it's just i need money to pay for my bills i need a job i'm gonna have to find a job whatever it is a lot of people are not in a privileged position to be able to pursue what they want to do i'm even aware that i'm in a privileged position to be able to do this job and have it work you know like there's so many people who don't get that and so for someone who has had a lot of things handed to him in his life he doesn't have to pay for his own clothes he doesn't even have to think about the money side of things he can just do it it's frustrating when you hear him not able to understand why there is that difference now that's not to say that downplaying that his life can be hard at certain times is okay we've seen the anxiety and the stress that he's been under and it's been severe he was having panic attacks like that's hard he lives a hard stressful life but you have to be socially aware especially as a royal and a king you have to be socially aware that people around you will not respond well if you're complaining about certain aspects of your life compared to someone else's and i know that he wasn't necessarily doing that but it was the whole aspect of saying like yeah i'm gonna be working all summer too i'm gonna be having a tough time because of my work when it's just a very different thing she's likely earning money so that she's gonna be able to do things in her life you're doing it because it's been something that's been assigned to you because like that's just what you have to do to get to live this life that you lead and i think ignoring that element of privilege is definitely problematic when it comes to being a king because you have to be aware of how people are going to perceive you in that regard now do i think that simon should have been so aggressive about it and should have treated willa badly because of it no he didn't realize what he was saying was bad he thought he was having a connecting moment he thought that he was saying oh look you're working in summer i'm working in summer see we're doing similar things like we have this shared thing as like a way to build a relationship with someone so him coming in being very angry at him and frustrated at him i don't agree with that because that just it makes the situation worse than it was you need to like gently explain to him why that was problematic and why you can't say things like that and why you need to understand that there is this difference in these ways of life but coming in guns blazing definitely isn't the best because i feel like it just doesn't get your point across very well it doesn't let you have this open discussion it just feels like it's an argument and at that point is willa really going to be able to understand your side of things so i think it was an important lesson that willa needs to learn but i think that it was gone about in a very bad way especially with i don't agree with the judgment that comes from simon's friend sometime i get that i would be the same way if i had a best friend and i didn't agree with their boyfriend's way of doing things and i had that element of judgment towards him but like from an outside perspective as someone who has seen willow grow and see like aspects of his personality that i adore and how lovely of a person he is i do get frustrated sometimes with how simon's friends see him but then I do get it when it, you look at their background to p compared to his background and the way that he doesn't see his privilege sometimes. I can understand why that would be frustrating. But moving on from that, um, there were other parts of the episodes that I wanted to discuss. Now, I think that bringing the race aspect in when it came to Felice was a very important thing because when you are in that privileged way of life, you're even more susceptible to the idea of not seeing that everyone isn't as privileged as you we just discussed it with willa but we can also look at these girls they don't realize that felice may be having a slightly different experience to them simply because of the color of her skin and that's wrong it's not okay that that happens and recognizing that it happens and recognizing that that is another issue of the school that we could focus on is even more important i mean at least in the uk when it comes to like the class system and everything i feel like the further up you go the more likely racism is to occur it just is ingrained into those systems for some reason and so when you look at the idea of felice being treated so, like differently because of the way that her hair is compared to others even though 
it shouldn't matter if she has it up or not compared to if she has it up or not. She is treated differently. And yes, you could argue that, oh, it's such a small thing, but like, it's not. She's being treated differently and we need to recognize that that could be a problem in this school. Ignoring these problems is only going to make them worse. So very, very, very proud of her because it's it's hard to stand up in front of people who are against you and d defend yourself. It's even harder to try and defend yourself to your friends. So good on her for bringing that up. But um, obviously the reaction wasn't the best. To take it that Felice was saying that she wasn't beautiful is weird. Like I get from a perspective of her not understanding why that would be the route that she goes down. But I hope that she tries to understand why that would be problematic. Sorry, I keep saying she, she. I'm talking about Stella. You know, Stella's reaction and all of that. But um, yeah, moving on from that. Obviously, we did have another bit of tension this episode, which was Simon's song that he released on social media. I think that, if anything, it's the palace's fault for not giving Simon and his mother, like, lessons and just instruction. Not instruction. I don't like the way that sounds. Just giving them help when it comes to these certain things. Helping them through this process. This is a world they're not used to. And you've just basically you haven't thrown them in yeah he's gone into it himself but if you're going to keep complaining about things that he's doing without doing anything to help him understand what you can't just rely on willa to explain it there's a personal element there you need a representative from the palace to be able to be on beck and call for willa for um simon and his mum to call when there are issues and to understand where issues pop up they need to have a liaison themselves. And the fact that that hasn't even been thought about and done is crazy to me. So yeah, hopefully we can see the tension between Willa and Simon get better after this. But I don't know. It was ugh, it was a hard topic to discuss. I think that there was just a bit too... For a lot of things this episode, there was a bit too much emotion involved. Which I'm not one for like dampening emotion and all of that. But we need to we need to try and have just like discussions and conversations rather than arguments because there were far too many arguments that happened. But um, yes, with all that said, though, I believe I've covered all of the main points I wanted to talk about. So let's have a look at some Patreon questions. Right, first up, what do you think Willa is experiencing mentally and emotionally when he calls, when he calls Simon to talk to him about the video he posted? I think that he is definitely in that field of he understands where the palace is coming from in terms of the fact that he has dealt with the palace all of his life and he understands why that would be a problem but i think he was going through a lot of stress there because he didn't want to be the one that was controlling simon he didn't want to be the one that was telling him what to do and it sucks that the palace has put him in this position where he has to constantly be the one to tell him what to do and so i think he was definitely going through that stress of how do i word this in a way where he understands that this isn't me annoyed at him for what he's posted i love that he is a creative person i love that he wants to create this music but I need to also get him to understand for both of our sakes so that this doesn't get worse why he can't be doing that so i think he was just extremely stressed in that in that moment you know but moving on next up simon seems to concede to willa's point that he can't just post everything he wants online for the sake of their relationship what impact do you think this could have on simon as someone whose traits include being passionate outspoken and creative very good point i was trying to touch on that but i don't think i touched on it fully um I think that it can feel very restrictive and very much like you are being controlled, which fucking sucks if we're talking about this being a relationship because a controlling relationship is a very toxic one and one you don't want to be in. So it does concern me that Simon might go down the route of feeling controlled by Willa, even though it's not Willa doing it. So we'll have to see how that goes. I just... Uh, I hope that's not the case, but I wouldn't be surprised if he gets to the point of feeling that way. Because it, it, for someone who's so expressive, it will feel very shit to be told you can't be that way, you know? But moving on next up, would love to hear your breakdown of Willa and Simon's argument in the tent. What do you make of Willa bringing up his summer job with Simon's friends? What did you think about the point Simon was trying to make and how Willa reacted to it? I have kind of touched on that a lot, but... To like summarize, I think that Simon had a point and Willa does need to learn that he is in a privileged position and he needs to understand how to other people, the way that he thinks that he's expressing himself may not be the way that he is coming across. And he needs to understand that it's all through, you need to like learn to view it through another person's lens. I do think that Simon was a little bit too harsh on Willa as if Willa did like this grave act of injustice, you know? I think that this is a conversation that obviously should have been ha held before it's a conversation that 
there is a motion behind that i think simon has not talked about before he did say you don't understand your privilege sometimes and i think that that is something that has obviously been building in his head it's obviously something he's noticed before but he's never brought up so i think that there was just a lot of emotion going on there that wasn't required so that's why i think that it ended in a big argument i think that simon should have come in a little bit more diplomatic and trying to like explain to willa why that was a problem but then i do understand why that would also be frustrating on simon's side of things when willa just isn't understanding and how does he not understand how he's not how he's not living the same problems that they're living you know i don't know if i worded that correctly but i hope you know what i mean <laughs> but yes moving on next up what do you think about willa and august each claiming that the other didn't actually know eric i think the most of that was them just being annoyed at each other and trying to get at each other but if we're gonna actually think about like the way each person would view it i think it's just because they both knew a different side of eric august knew the side of eric that was the one who was at school the one who was there to have fun the one who was there to let go of responsibilities when it mattered like let go of responsibilities when you could let go of them whereas willa definitely viewed it as his older brother who always had it put together his older brother who was a great person when it came to the royal family and he was a great brother to him and i think that they just have very different views of the way eric was based on the eric that they knew so i think that neither of them know everything about him it's hard to know everything about a person when you haven't been through every single thing that they've been through but i think their combined knowledge basically would be knowing eric perfectly so i think that it was just that moment of them being frustrated at each other and not understanding but moving on our next and final question at the start of this season we are getting to see a lot of beautiful moments with willa and simon showing how in love they are what are your thoughts on the chemistry between edvin and omar portraying this particularly in the scene by the lockers after willa joins the choir i was literally thinking about this during that scene i was thinking to myself how the fuck did they portray this so passionately when they're not like actually together when this is just them two acting like how do you portray that with someone someone as well that you would consider like a really good friend like it's clear that they have a very close bond it's clear that they are bonded for life essentially they are best friends but it's just it's crazy to me that you're able to have that passionate moment with someone when you're not like that in real life you know it's not like this is a real relationship so they did a fantastic job at portraying that my god i would be convinced if i didn't know better and i didn't know that they like I'm pretty sure I don't know about Omar, but I'm pretty sure Edvin is in a relationship right now. But I don't know if I'm sure about that because I tend to stay away from all stuff in case of spoilers. But um, just knowing that they're not actually together in real life is crazy because if I was watching this and not knowing that, I would be convinced based purely on the amount of chemistry that they have, you know? But yes, with that said though, that was a great episode. Loving the season so far. I love the things that they're touching on, the way that we're seeing this society, or not necessarily this society, that we're seeing how people who are of this class, of this life, of this privileged position, how they are now dealing with the consequences of their actions and the way that different different individuals view it you know how each of them has taken this problem at their school and what they've thought about it because you've got some people who are thinking it's completely unfair and it was all jokes you got some people who were thinking well yeah some stuff was bad but is it worth shutting down the school and then we've got some people who are like well it is fucked up and i'm not surprised you know we're seeing very different opinions from people of different walks of life and i'm just excited to see that continue as the season goes on and see if we're going to see some shifts in these very privileged people's perspectives you know but yes with that said though thank you very much for watching i've left a link down below to my patreon be able to find the early and a cut reaction to young royals and all the other shows that i do also left a link to my twitch my discord and my socials so be sure to follow them if you are interested and yes thank you very much for watching and i hope to see you next time bye bye